You might have heard of this story. I've got two different versions of it I want to share for you, all right? So I want everyone to snuggle in and get all nice and tucked in. Yes, you all get forehead kisses. And I'm going to get a warm cookie and milk for each and every one of you, but not too many, okay? Because it's your bedtime. Thank you so much for the roses. I appreciate it. All right. Are you ready for me to begin? Get all snuggled in, all right? Here we go. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Robert L. May. Twas the day before Christmas, and all through the hills, the reindeer were playing, enjoying their spills. While every so often they'd stop to call names, at one little deer, not allowed in their games. Ha ha! Look at Rudolph! His nose is a sight! It's red as a beet! Twice as big! Twice as bright! While Rudolph just cried, what else could he do? He knew that the things they were saying was true. Where most reindeer's noses are brownish and tiny, poor Rudolph was red, very large, quite shiny. In daylight it sparkled. The picture shows that. At nighttime it glowed like the eyes of a cat. Although he was lonesome, he always was good, obeying his parents as good reindeer should. I hope you all are being very good reindeer. That's why on this day, Rudolph almost felt playful. He hopped that he hoped that from Santa, soon driving his sleigh full of presents and candy and dollies and toys for good little animals, good girls, good boys. He'd get just as much, and this is what pleased him, as the happier, handsomer reindeer that teased him. Do you think teasing him was good? So as night and a fog hid the world like a hood, he went to bed hopeful he knew he'd been good, while way, way up north on this same foggy night, old Santa was packing his sleigh for its flight. This fog, he called out, will be hard to get through. He shook his round head, and his tummy shook too. Without any stars or a moon as our compass, this extra dark night is quite likely to swamp us. To keep from a smash-up, we'll have to drive slow. To see where we're going, We'll have to fly low. We'll steer by the street lamps and houses tonight in order to finish before it gets light. Just think how the boys' and girls' hopes would be shaken if we didn't reach them before they awaken. Come, Dasher! Come, Dancer! Come, Prancer and Vixen! Come, Comet, come, Cupid! Come, Donner and Blitzen! Be quick with your suppers! Get hitched in a hurry! You too will find fog a delay and a worry! And Santa was right, as he usually is. The fog was as thick as a soda's white fizz. 
He tangled in treetops again and again and barely mishitting a huge speeding plane. Just not getting lost needed all Santa's skill with street signs and numbers more difficult still. He still made good speed with much twisting and turning as long as the street lamps and house lights were burning. At each house first checking what people might live there. Maybe he's come to your house. He'd quickly pick out the right presents to give there. But lights will be out after midnight, he said, for even most parents have gone to bed. Because it might wake them, a match was denied him. And my, how he wished for one star to guide him. Though dark streets and houses, old Santa did poorly. He now picked his presents more slowly, less surely. He really was worried, for what would he do if folks started waking before he was through? The night was still foggy and not at all clear when Santa arrived at the home of a deer. On to the roof! With the clouds all around it, he searched for the chimney, and finally he found it. The room he came down in was blacker than ink. He went for a chair, but it turned out a sink! The first reindeer bedroom was so very black, he tripped on the rug and burst open his pack. So dark that he had to move close to the bed and peek very hard at the sleeping deer's head. But before he could choose the right kind of toy, a doll for a girl or a train for a boy, though either would be fine, by the way. But all this took time and filled Santa with gloom while feeling his way toward the next reindeer's room. The door he just opened when, to his surprise, a soft glowing red-colored light met his eyes. Whose room do you think that was? Hmm? The lamp wasn't burning, the light came instead from something that lay at the head of the bed. And there lay, but wait now, what would you suppose? <gasps> the glowing, you've guessed it, it was Rudolph's red nose. So this room was easy, this one's little light. Let Santa pick gifts that were just right. How happy he was till he went out the door. The rest of the house was black as before. So black that it made every step a dark mystery. And then came the greatest idea in all history. He went back to Rudolph and started to shake him, of course, very gently, in order to wake him. And Rudolph could hardly believe his own eyes. You can just imagine his joy and surprise at seeing who stood there a pause length away and told of the darkness and fog and delay, and Santa's great worry the children might waken before he completed his Christmas trip had taken. And you, he told Rudolph, may yet save the day. Your bright shining nose, son, 
can show us the way. I need you, young fellow, to help me tonight to lead all my dear on the rest of our flight. And Rudolph broke out into such a big grin, he almost connected his ears to his chin. He scribbled a note to his fur folks in a hurry. I've gone to help Santa, he wrote. Do not worry, said Santa. Meet me and my sleigh on the lawn. You'd stick in the chimney and flash, he was gone. So Rudolph pranced out through the door very gay, me too, and took his proud place at the head of the sleigh. And the rest of the night, well, what would you guess? Old Santa's idea was a brilliant success. And brilliant was almost no word for the way that Rudolph directed the deer and the sleigh. In spite of the fog, they flew quickly and low and made such good use of his wonderful glow that shone out from Rudolph at each intersection, that not even once did they lose their direction. Not like me, I get lost all the time. At all of the houses and streets with sign on them, the sleigh flew real low so Rudolph could shine on them to tell who lived there and just what to give whom. They'd stop by each window and peek in the room. Old Santa knew always which children were good and minded their parents and ate what they should. So Santa would pick out the gift that was right when Rudolph close by making just enough light. It all went so fast that before it was day, the very last present was given away. The very last stocking was filled to the top just as the sun was preparing to top. The sun woke the reindeer in Rudolph's hometown. They found the short message that he'd written down. They gathered outside to await his return and were surprised and excited to learn that Rudolph, the ugliest deer of them all, did you think he was ugly? Rudolph the red-nosed, bashful and small, the funny-faced fellow they all called names and practically never allowed in their games, a bunch of jerks, was now to be envied by all far and near, for no greater honor can come to a deer. Then riding with Santa and guiding his sleigh, the number one job on the number one day. The sleigh and its reindeer soon came into view, and Rudolph still led them as downward they flew. Oh my, was he proud as they came to a landing right where his handsomer... Hmm. Playmates were standing. The same deer who used to do nothing but tease him would now have done anything only to please him. They felt even sorrier than they had been bad when Santa said, Rudolph, I never have had a deer quite so brave or so brilliant as you at fighting black fog and steering me through. By you, last night's journey was actually bossed. Without you, I'm certain we'd all have been lost. I hope you'll continue to keep us from grief on future dark trips 
as Commander-in-Chief. While Rudolph just blushed from the head to his toes till all of his fur was as red as his nose. The crowd clapped their paws and they started to screech. Hooray for our Rudolph and we want a speech. But Rudolph, still bashful, despite being a hero, was tired. His sleep on the trip totaled zero. So that's why his speech was quite short and not bright. Merry Christmas to all. <sighs> and to all a good night. And that's why whenever it's foggy and gray, it's Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer who guides Santa's sleigh. Be listening this Christmas, but don't make a peep. Because that's late at night when children should sleep. The very first sound you'll hear on the roof, that is if there's fog, will be Rudolph's small hoof. And soon after that, if you're still as a mouse, you may hear a swish as he flies round the house. And shines enough light to give Santa a view. A view and your room. And when they're all through, you may hear them call as they drive out of sight. Can you say it with me? Merry Christmas to all. And to all a good night. Oh, you all did such a great job. I'm so proud of you for listening. Now, I have a question for you since you've been very, very good. Would you like to hear another Rudolph story? Because I'd be happy to say it with, for you. You ready? Here we go. Rudolph Shines Again by Robert L. May. Twas a month before Christmas when Rudolph at play saw Santa drive up to call for his sleigh. The weatherman says there'll be snow Christmas Eve, so please tell your parents I'd like you to leave. To lead all my dear through the dark snowy night With your shining red nose and its wonderful light Meanwhile, of course, you can work on the toys We'll be make, taking this Christmas to good girls and boys As Rudolph was hitched up in front of the rest He heard the deer whisper What makes him the best? We're bigger, we're stronger, and older, you said it. But we get the backaches while he gets the credit. The deer in the workshop were mean to him too. They gave him the messiest gluing to do. Ooh, sticky. He carried the heaviest loads to them all. And when football was played, they made Rudolph the ball. Can you imagine that? Poor Rudolph. He worried, he wept, he whined. And the more he shed tears, the less his nose shined. Oh, poor little me. He would pity and pout till one day the light of his nose went out! Oh no! With this nose, I never could lead Santa's sleigh. I'm useless here now, so why should I stay? I'll leave here tonight while the rest are in bed and go to some faraway country instead 
where none of the new folks who will be introduced to me know how much brighter my nose really used to be. He left and he traveled for mile after mile till one day when ready to rest for a while in a field with a thick forest behind it. He heard a strange noise, but he just couldn't find it until he came close as darkness was falling. Hundreds of rabbits were crying and calling. Two of our children, Donnie and Doris, taking a walk got lost in the forest. It's much, much too dark now to search or to follow them. By morning, a fox or a wolf will have swallowed them. If only we rabbits had eyes like a cat or a bright shining flashlight, we sure could use that. Thought Fru Rudolph, those rabbits have reason to worry. I'd better stop pitying me in a hurry. And right then and there, Rudolph ended his habits of pouting and tears and thought just of those rabbits. I'll find them, he shouted. I'll find Donnie and Doris with my bright shining nose. And he dashed into the forest. Completely forgetting himself and his woes, he'd even forgotten to change in his nose. Because he was running as fast as he could, he learned his mistake. He was deep in the wood. He now faced the risks of that dangerous place. With a nose no more bright than the one on your face. I promised the rabbits their babies I'd save. I may have been stupid, but I've got to be brave. Would you be brave too? I bet you would. My nose doesn't shine, but like all other deers, I'm still a good sniffer, and I have sharp ears. Quickly and quietly, he ran through the forest, sniffing and listening for Donnie and Doris, and sniffing and listening too for the sly foxes. And wolves he knew were close by. With all that huge forest to search without light, do you think Rudolph will find them that night? What do you think? Do you think Rudolph is going to find them? Perhaps it was smartness. Perhaps it was luck. Or perhaps a reward for his bravery and pluck, was sent by an angel from way, way on high, who steered Rudolph's feet toward a very small cry. Ooh. From the thick patches of bushes, that's where he found them, frightened but safe, with leaves piled round them. To keep out the cold and wild animals, too. I'm your friend, Rudolph whispered. I'm come for you to help get you home. So please have no fears. Just jump on my back and hold tight to my ears. The foxes and wolves would like all to meet us in order to cook us and carve us and eat us. So Rudolph bent down, and the bunnies obeyed, and he ran so fast that no animal laid a claw or a tooth on bunnies or deer, though two panting wolves came terribly near. Ow, ow, ow! Then out of the woods... For a grand happy landing in the field where the crowd of sad rabbits were standing. Just picture the mother and dad's rabbit joy when Rudolph brought back both their girl and their boy. They thanked him and thanked him and begged him to stay. 
said Rudolph, I'll come for a visit one day, but my job is with Santa to help him as I can. I was wrong to go away from that wonderful man. Perhaps it was cause of my weeping and whining that all of a sudden my nose stopped shining. With a dull noise, last night in the woods, I helped you. In that case, I could surely help Santa too. As Santa's front reindeer, I guess I'm all through. But I could still load boxes or work with the glue. As tears from the rabbit's eyes started to roll, he started his trip to the far north pole. Before this remarkable journey was through, twas the day before Christmas, and darker it grew. The gray northern sky and the fog and the snow would make anyone travel quite slow or even get lost. But Rudolph just flew straight as an arrow and speedily too. Though the heaviest snowstorm and fog of the season, how did he get through? Can you guess the reason? Can you guess how Rudolph got through? I bet you know. Ever since Rudolph had saved those young rabbits, forgetting himself and ending his habits of thinking of Rudolph and weeping and whining, the light in his nose had started to shining. At first, very little, too dimly to view with it, do you think that that angel had something to do with it? Then slowly more bright, like a red glowing coal. Until, when at last, he could see the North Pole. And Santa's big sleigh by the workshop front door, it shone just as brightly as ever before. The deer were all hitched, the sleigh almost loaded, and Santa so worried, he nearly exploded. For thou Rudolph's red nose and its wonderful glow, how will I steer through the fog and the snow? But when he saw Rudolph, he shouted, Hooray! Quick, take your place at the head of the sleigh. The deer crowd called, Rudolph! We, dear, are glad, too. We hoped you'd forgive the big loads and the glue. For next year your job in the shop is a dandy. Next year your job will be... Tasting candy. Are y'all going to taste candy with me next year? That sounds really, that sounds really good. I want to do that. So happy young Rudolph led Santa's great sleigh. With Rudolph's red nose again lighting the way through darkness and fog to deliver the toys that was given that Christmas to good girls and boys. Swiftly they traveled as Rudolph's nose shone on each waiting chimney, including your own. The very first sound you could hear on the roof as the sleigh landed was Rudolph's small hoof. And his nose made the light that gave Santa a view of you and your room. And when they were through, you might too have heard as they drove out of sight. Do you want to say it with me? Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.